It's down to the last four teams, and BetOnline has been your tournament bracket headquarters all March long. MLB is here, and NBA and NHL playoffs are around the corner. BetOnline is the number one source for your summer sports wagering. Head to BetOnline today to stay updated on all the action. BetOnline, the game starts here. And I think that that's why she's going after me, and that's why she's saying all these horrible things, is because she thinks that that's going to get her back on the show. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of On Display. I am really, really, really excited about this one today. Every time I catch up with these girls, we have so much to talk about that we can barely fit it into one episode. So because of that, we're going to do a two-parter. The first part is going to be here on On Display, and then we're going to hop over to Two T's podcast for the second part. And don't worry, the link to the second part will be in the podcast description. So with that said, I'd love to introduce my guest today, which will be no surprise now. They're the lovely women of the two T's in a pause. They can be twats sometimes. Tamara <laughs> Judge and Teddy Mellencamp. What's up, my girls? What's up? We have missed you. I, I know. Since, I've seen you since BravoCon. I, I haven't seen you, right? right? I haven't seen you at all since BravoCon. I feel like I have been in Real Housewives of New Jersey world. And you guys have so much going on, too. Just, Teddy, you're a full-blown podcaster now. I feel like... 24 hours a day, right? You do so, you both really are. We both are. We are. I mean, I think that we have so, I mean, we didn't even realize when we started all of this that like it just really started with the one pod and we we're like, okay, we're going to just start recapping the shows. And now it's, you know, transferred to Tamara is doing talking a big game where she talks about all the game shows. And then I've got popping off where I'm about to be doing secret lives of Mormon wives. We wow. do too hot to handle. Like we, we've gone past like the Bravo world, but of course we know like the, the cusp of what people want to hear about. So we're talking about whatever shows on the air and, you know, our, our, our main motto is you're only as good as this week's episode. And I think people really enjoy that because <laughs> oh our opinions change each and every day. Well, let me just tell you both, because I know you both personally, and I love you, honestly, both personally. You guys are killing it, and I'm so proud of you guys. You really are. It's not easy to, like, break out of Housewives and just do this, but your podcast is always in the top of the numbers, and it kills it. So congrats to both of you for Well, thank you. You're we welcome. never thought that that was going to happen, but here we are three years later. We have our own network on iHeart with multiple podcasts underneath us, and just between doing our own businesses, podcasting, filming, all the things we do. I'm like, oh my God, I'm like dead. But also we have to give you a little bit of kudos too. I mean, the fact that Envy is still in business, you're crushing yes. it. You Thank like, you. that is huge because we often talk about how many times housewives just kind of housewives is all they have. Right. And then when that ends, there's absolutely nothing else. And you created a business that's sustainable to your life that you have actually integrated into your business, your life, your whatever. And it's good. And Thank the you. fact that it doesn't feel fake when we see it on the show, we're like, clearly this is her business and it's doing well and all of that. I think that really good. Do you know Thank what I you. think? I think when somebody has like a legitimate business like let's say like my Vena CBD, your Envy, like it's not talked about all the time, but then right. you have like these housewives that come on that have these fake businesses. They're like, I have this new business called Diet Coke and <laughs> everything they talk about is Diet Coke. And we're going to go to the Diet Coke warehouse. You know, it's like, it is so ridiculous. And then we're going to throw a whole party around Diet Coke. And I, I know. But when you have it's a so legit true. business, it consumes so much of your life when you're on house. She's like, I don't fucking want to talk about it. Agreed. Agreed. And thank yeah. you for saying that. It is. Thank, it's been going for eight years really strong. And the thing with, with Envy is it grows every year. Like the numbers go up and up and up and my customer base and the email base and everything just gets larger and larger and larger. So it is something that I, I really did build from the ground up. And But no one hasn't grown our packages from Envy. Oh my God. Okay. I'm sending you both something tomorrow. Both of you, just for being so nice about it too. I'm sending you both I need, something I need tomorrow. help with a reunion dress. 
Okay, no, let me look what I have. But either way, I'll send you a cute fall outfit or something tomorrow. I, I just need casual outfits that I can wear on the pod that make it feel like I've made an effort, but yet I'm not in pajamas. That's really my goal. Oh my God, you're, that's me, 24-7. I just want to be comfortable. I can't even, like, just <laughs> comfort is it. But I'm sending you both something tomorrow from Envy. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. And you know what? My clothes are cute. Like, they're cute. I have they're cute so things. They're so cute. They have. I've been on your website before. Okay, good. Well, you need to become a, a shopper. But I will send you your your outfits for you to, to have because I can't wait to do that. So that's good. But Tam, something else that you missed, guess what today is? Oh, God. Yes. Guess it's what today Melissa's is? Melissa's 20, 20 year, year wedding year anniversary. I know. Congratulations. Thank you. That's a freaking long time, right? 20 years. I'm like, Jesus. I married him when I was 25 years old. And housewife years, that's like 70 years being married. So wait, so your anniversary was yesterday? It's today. It's today. today. Wait, when shows Big First, Five O? He turns 50 tomorrow. So... so yeah. So it's like so one of those Mary things. Yep. On his birthday, pretty much because at midnight it turned 12 o'clock, it turned his birthday and it was his 30th birthday when we got married. And I like had a cake come out at midnight on the dance floor. So now that was 20 years ago. So now we're, now it's 50. It's pretty crazy, right? Well, yeah, it is. how did you guys, I mean, and how quickly did you get married after meeting? And like, how did you know this is the guy I'm going to marry? You know, at the time I, well, first of all, we got married within, oh God, pretty fast. I'm not going to lie. We started dating in October. I feel like I moved into his house within like two months. I moved in because he had like this bachelor pad of a house. That Did you have sex night one? No. So I made him wait eight weeks for sex. What? Eight. Wow. Yes. I knew he was like an old school Italian boy too. And like he wanted to marry Mother Teresa, you know? And it's like, hold on. I don't know that we should use that word. I don't, right yeah. Now. I think that you, Mother <laughs> Melissa. I mean, the Let's holy one, Melissa. you know, the, the, the great. You yes, know? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, the real one. You know what I mean? Up there, <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So, so, you know, I just, no. And, and I did make him wait because at the time I, I really was dating a bunch of just like club. I was like a back in the day, like they don't have clubs now. Like there's no like clubs, but I used to go to the clubs, like the nightclubs. And, you know, I dated guys that were like, eh, nobody was great. But when him and I met, we just knew like, we both just wanted to get married. We wanted to have babies. We were just like, you know, on the same page at did the time. You, did you know him or know of him or did you know Teresa or anything like that when you met him? No, I didn't know Teresa at all, but I knew I had known Joe because he, I didn't really know him, but he was a friend like of somebody else that I knew. So we actually met in Cancun, guys. Like I was walking around on spring break. I was like, I want to say hey, I was like, too. Yes. He, he'll he describe it. Like I had on a leopard bikini and black curly hair and like Gucci sunglasses. And that's how he remembers it. And I was probably 21 years old and I was walking around and he pointed to his friend who was then my best man and said, that's going to be my wife. Um, but at the time he was engaged <laughs> or he was like, Hold just on. Breaking. yeah, he was like just getting done with his engagement or something. I don't know, break broke off or something. So it took a minute and now um, here we are, but we did, we got married. I want to say we got married within, be, within the year we were married within the year. Do you wow. ever see the ex that he was engaged to? Is she still in Jersey? Um, hi, she lives in my backyard. Hold. Stop it. I'm going to need more information. I'm, I'm, I'm picturing Frank. Like, okay. what do you mean? <laughs> Frank's down the street, her backyard. She lives on the street across. Her backyard is backed up to pretty much my backyard. She's a slight slant, but that's where she lives with her husband in my backyard. Do you guys look alike? Like, does he have a type? Um, she's she's cute. She's a cute little um, brunette Italian. Yes, yes, she's cute. I Are see you her with her. So I had no idea who she was. But there's these events for the school, like and they throw Franklin Lakes throws like the bougiest. They're called fleff events, which is like the biggest donations and the biggest party you've ever seen parents throw to collect money for the schools. 
And she, you know, we're both there once or twice. And one time she walked up to me and she like looked at me and she, I didn't, it didn't register. And she like shook my hand and told me her name. I don't want to like call her out. And she just looked at me. She's like, I'm so-and-so. And And I was like, oh, hi. Like I wasn't registering. And she's like, no, I'm (laughs) so-and-so. And And I'm like, oh, Oh, I'm like, so nice to meet you. I was like, yeah, it was like, weird. sorry, sorry. I stole your man. Yeah. I, but I really didn't. They were broken up. Joe had called off the wedding, like, like before he met me, believe it or not, but he was engaged twice before me. So this, was, <laughs> this is not a judging group. I'm on my second marriage. Like right, okay, Tam, there you're on, go. Tam's on her third, like you're winning and in, in according to the twats, yeah. like you are really in a, in a good well, place. Well, you're just winning at life period because most people are not married 20 years. Yeah. I nowadays. can't, sometimes I just can't believe it. Like I even looked at him this morning and I was just, was like, wow, like 20 years. That's a, that's a really long time. So I'm pr- especially being in a fishbowl, right? Like being on this show and you've seen how many people tried to accuse me and him or whatever of all of these stupid things trying to like pull us apart. Yeah. And we don't always have support surrounding us with a lot of things, but we also feel like we advocate for like a healthy marriage and a fun marriage. We're a fun couple. And I think people don't understand that. I think that's why our marriage has lasted so long because we keep the fun in our marriage. Like he truly is my best Mm -hmm. friend. And Tamara, I've seen, and I've seen you both actually with your husbands who I love both of your husbands and you both have that type of relationship because I've seen you guys at BravoCon and I know Eddie's so much fun. He hangs with you all the time too. Like you guys both have tight, fun relationships as well. We do. He's like, he's over here listening. He's like, what is that? Hey, Um, hey, hey. Hey, she says, hey. No, he's my best friend. We spend a lot of time together and we're in a position now where, you know, all the kids are pretty much grown. Sophia's almost 19. She's the only one left at home and we just do everything together. Yeah, I see that. I'm not saying it doesn't get on my nerves once in a while. Uh, And me and my husband do not do everything together. We call ourselves two ships passing in the night, but we have so much respect for what the other person does And like, we believe like we, we, whether we're out of town or we're home together, like every morning, it's like, I got you. I love you. I'm so proud of you. Keep hustling. Like, and then you have those moments of connection. And I I didn't know he was such a, um, like a quote guy. Like when I spoke to him a little bit, I had some time with him at BravoCon this past one and we sat together and we had a drink. And I didn't know he was so intense with like advice and motivation and all of that. I was like, wow, he's very like insightful. Sometimes it drives me crazy. I'm like, (laughs) I actually didn't want advice. I just wanted to vent to you, my love. (laughs) Like, just let me vent. And I don't need, I actually didn't want your advice. I just wanted you to be like, oh, I totally get it. But I think that the biggest thing in marriage for all of us is that we can laugh with our partners. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And have fun. Because if you can't laugh, it's demise. A thousand percent. Are you in pain after walking, running, or even just standing? It's not your feet, it's your shoes. This summer, switch to Jetify Shoes with patented VersoShock technology, which aligns your body, provides superior shock absorption, and trampoline-like energy return. Jetify offers soles and styles for any activity, plus two free orthotics. Whether you're an athlete, a busy parent, or always on the go, Jetify Shoes deliver the comfort and versatility your feet crave. Say goodbye to discomfort and hello to unparalleled support this summer. The Gorgas own a few pairs of Jetify shoes and we all love them. They're comfortable, easy to slip on, and they look fashionable. After a whole day on your feet, you can truly tell that Jetify shoes make a huge difference in the comfort category. Enjoy a special summer offer. Visit gdefy.com and get $20 off your order of $100 or more with code MELISSA. Experience ultimate comfort with Gdefy shoes. Visit gdefy, G-D-E-F-Y dot com today. You've been hearing me talk about how much I'm loving the clean and affordable skincare from Dime Beauty, and it's finally here. It happens once a year. The Dime Beauty anniversary sale is on with 25% off site-wide. Their work system is amazing. The Tinted Glow Wonder Screen, Serums, 
I could go on and on and on. This is a great time to stock up on your favorites or just try something new. Dime Beauty is clean, high-end skincare that is affordable. And yes, it really works. Guys, I've been using Dime for quite a while now. I've definitely been using it all summer. And one of the things I routinely order is the work system. We all know skincare routines can get intense. So I wanted to simplify things. And that's exactly where the Dime's work system comes in. The work system is everything you need in one powerful package. It includes a gentle cleanser, a toner, two incredible serums, and two luxurious moisturizers. Dime has over 2 million happy customers and their product reviews are literally all five stars. Go to dimebeautyco.com now and get 25% off site-wide during their anniversary sale. Stock up on your favorites or try something new, but hurry, the sale ends on Monday. Go to dimebeautyco.com, dimebeautyco.com for 25% off site-wide until Monday. All right, I have a couple questions for you, Tamara, obviously, about yes. OC. Um, we'll keep it as clean as possible because the Bravo gods yes. are watching us, as we know. Like you guys know they run a tight ship over there with that with the Housewives shows in Jersey and OC. So we can for say sure. as much as we'd like to say, but you know. Wait, first of all, before we get into this, Teddy, you filmed this year with the girls, right? I did. I did. It airs next week. Okay. Hold on. I went on to Hulu because I was trying to watch some of the old episodes to prep. And it was my comment to Vicky. And I was like, oh, <laughs> hell. Like the moment of panic. Like I'm like, is that a little bit of time that I'm on that show? Am I going to be the same asshole that I was on Beverly Hills? Yes. Or like, are they going to show yes. a little bit of appeal in me? But I'm like, either way, whatever. I'm so glad I could be there for town. I mean, what a friend, what a friend, because let me just tell you, you had that sound bite, girlfriend. I'm like, look at Teddy. <laughs> she walks right in and she was like, bam. And I'm like, oh shit. Like it was, but it and was, then she tries to blame me. She tries to blame me. <laughs> oh, Tamara told me to say that. I'm like, bitch, really? <laughs> I no. I, I, so everybody flips out right after I say it and I go, I'm sorry, Tamara wrote it. Oh yeah, my God. Thanks. See, I like this relationship you guys have. It's like a, you can like go back and forth a little bit. You could fight and make up. This is like, that's a real friendship. Because I love, I, I genuinely love her. I love Tamara. Like I, I at can the end of the you day, do. like we may have very different opinions. Like even watching Jersey this year, or whatever shows, we may have hugely different opinions. But at the end of the day, like I know if I needed to make a call to somebody, Tamara, 1 million percent would be there. And I know that I would do the oh, same for, sure. for her. And I won't that's... even watch the orange. I won't even listen to the Orange County recaps because um, she gets mad. it's so different than what I, her, Teddy's opinion is so different than my opinion. Well, can you imagine like, us listening to you guys when you recap Jersey? Although I never I really get that mad at y'all. I got to be honest. But I, I have to say, like, must it's hard because you guys recap all the Housewives shows, you know? But, like, you could you imagine what everyone's thinking when they're listening to you guys recap? The messages they, that we get, like, you didn't get it. You saw it wrong and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, we're not mad at you. Like, we love you guys. That's why we're talking about you. But, like, sometimes... You look like assholes. And right. you know what? We are the biggest assholes out there. So like, we're not judging you. We're just <laughs> Takes saying. Takes one to know one. Yeah. Like it, it, and that's, I think that's what makes it so fun for us because at the end of the day, we don't really give Well, so in all honesty, shits. we don't recap the shows to go after somebody's character. We're going after, when we talk about, we're talking about what you're doing in scene. It's not like, oh my God, that girl is she's gross. She freaks me out. Like, it's not that it's more like the situation oh God, that was a stupid move. Like, you know, we we like everybody. Well, almost everybody. And, you do not uh, like Jen Aiden ever. You've never liked Jen Aiden. And no, can I, I fall? Like I'm not supposed to talk, but mm -hmm, that's how I answer that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, not come on one now. Second. Does anybody? I know. Um, so your pub your publicist was with me in, uh, New York when I did press last night. Sarah? Week. Sarah, yes. Adorable. Love. So cute. Loved her. My favorite so human. Much. And um, I think in one of my interviews, they asked me about Jersey. I'm like, the only one I like, I do not want Jen Aiden back ever. And she's over there looking at me like, really? Okay, really? <laughs> I'm like, I don't. I just said, 
woman rubs me the wrong way. Yeah, I could, I can have a very, I could keep talking right now, but I'm just going to keep it moving to the next question. Yeah, just let me do okay. the talking. Yeah. Keep it moving. Well, I need to talk to you about Shannon. I mean, is this like a tough love kind of thing between you and her? Yeah. Or, or like, do you, we yeah. hate her now? What's happening? No, I don't hate her. I've never hated her. I mean, towards the end of the season, she does some pretty shitty things and tries to get in between some of my friendships. And I kind of hate her at the moment. But I think what people don't understand is I was there for her after her DUI. I was on the phone with her when I got back, not immediately because I was in Scotland filming uh, Traders, but when I got back, um, I had to wait a week because you're not allowed to let anybody know you're home because it could spoil the right. outcome or whatever. Yes. I wasn't allowed to do my podcast. And then I ended up in the hospital. So um, by the time I was allowed to, it was like probably three weeks after her uh, DUI, I you know, let her know like, hey, I'm in the hospital, I'm super sick. And I don't think that we should go on with um, doing this live show. I think it's in bad taste if we do this. I think you need to get help right now. And um, so there was a lot of stuff going on back then. And she told me like, if I didn't do the show because her and Vicky signed a contract that I would get sued for not showing up. So I said, okay, I'm gonna do it. But I need you to make a public statement first. And apologize. And was she annoyed? Because at that? the last thing I want to do is show up at a live show with mothers against drunk drivers picketing out in the front. That's you know what I mean? Like exactly. my mind goes to like so and I said and I it just you need to take accountability. So she did do a public, you know, apology and all that stuff. And then that's why I, I said, Okay, that was my only stipulation because first of all, I didn't want to get sued. And I just needed her to do that. So we move forward and I can't give away too much because you'll see even in the in this week's episode, um, you know, why, why I, I couldn't be by her side anymore because she kept drinking. Wow. Yeah. And everyone keeps saying like, why is Tamara so obsessed with like pointing out that she's drinking and making her look bad? And are you just trying to bring awareness to her? I don't to have to her? make her look bad. She looks bad by herself by continuing to drink. But hold on. I have to say something really quick, Tamara. And I, and I, and people are going to be on my ass about this. But I think if we're going to talk about somebody that's going to make somebody look bad, at that last week on Real Housewives of Orange County, yes, Tamara does pop off. She says some things that you're like, ah, I wish you could have said that in a different tone. Well, this but is Vicky, what, this but is what hold you don't on, understand. wait. What Vicky says... I think is so much more damaging. Like Shannon goes to just sit down at the dinner and then Vicky goes, you know what? You can have a drink if you want to, you can have multiple. And that was Vicky's way of just fueling the fire. She wanted to make that a discussion of the dinner, which totally. it never needed totally. to be. Do you, do you, do you get what I'm saying? I like, do. That so was her way of getting in there, making a little thing happen at the dinner, but at the expense, obviously of Shannon. Of Shannon, but while pretending to be Shannon's friend, but I can assure you if I had just gotten a DUI and I wasn't sober and I sat down and it on camera, one of my friends looked at me and it's like, you can have a drink. I'd be like, fuck off. Right. Right. Why are you saying that? Why are she said it in the, in the car as well. And uh, what you didn't see is when I was talking to Vicky, that one-on-one, -on -one, I'm like, why are you encouraging her to drink? You know, she has a drinking problem. She goes, yeah, I know. That's what Vicky I'm said like, right to you. Did they have that on camera? Right to my face. Oh, wow. Right. Didn't even show it. Yeah. Wow. So I'm like, yeah, who knows? Maybe it'll be a flashback, but it, it, there so much went into that night. She actually came for me, which was insane. She came for Alexis as well. She was mom shaming her. And, and what you saw was my reaction to that. Right. Yeah. So because people are like, why did you just go from zero to 60? Well, that's why. Right. Which makes more sense. It's like, you sometimes have to like put it all together and then it makes a little bit more sense. Um, even yeah. Shannon, like, what is your situation with her? Like, I'm not Shannon. I'm sorry, Vicky. Like, are you guys on speaking terms right now? How is that? Like no, I will never speak to that desperate woman ever again in my life. Wow. So basically we, she filmed about five times a season and I, we talked, we had fun. We like, you'll see, and uh, probably next week's episode, we have a great time. And there was never any issue between her and I, we've, I've known her longer than I've known Vicky. I've known her for 17 years. And we've gone through so much together. And um, and so all of a sudden she started going off on me on social media, doing interviews. I'm like, what the hell did I do to you? 
I know. What did, did I you see her here? recent one know. today? You guys are both on her recent one today. So it says the most toxic. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, she, yes, I yeah. saw that. And she goes, Tamara's I agree with Shan. One. Yes. So it's like Tamara, then somebody, then Melissa. There's a couple people. And I mean, it's Vicky like comments. coming from Vicky because, I mean, here's a woman that lied about cancer to keep her job. This is a woman that has done so many unethical things. You know, this is a woman that's being sued right now for, and I hate to bring up lawsuits, but why don't you just be quiet and just leave everybody alone? I'm not out there. I'm just now speaking out. She has been talking badly about me for months now. She had Teresa on her podcast and she went on Teresa's podcast. They trashed me, trashed me. Yeah, what is that back and forth with you and her also? That's like, I can't keep up. One thing I will say is that you and I, Tamara, have always managed to never get into a fight through... Through all the years that we've known each other, we've never had like the back and forth, but I feel no, like. No, I mean, but there's no reason for us yeah. to. I'm like, it's crazy. You know, Vicky wants to act like she's something she's not. And for her to be like yelling at us, this is not all right. And then I thank God Heather said in her interview, like, oh, let's not pretend that Vicky isn't the root of, you know, whatever she said, because. That's all Vicky did when she was on the show. Now that she's off the show, she's like, well, I just want to come in and I, this is disgusting. And how can you do this? And it's like, shut up. But well, this is up. the part right. from coming in from a very, very small percentage of it. Something for me, and it, maybe you agree or disagree with me, Melissa, but like if you're willing to go on and be paid as a friend of or do whatever it may be, and you're going to show up to the show, you show up and you work. She came in. And the second that we got there was complaining about the time, how much time till we're done. I don't want the drama. I don't want this. I don't want that. Then don't be here. Right. No, she won't be back. I can tell you right now. Like that was my next question for you. Do you think they would make her a full time or be back as a part time at all? No. 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 She actually, after, before the show aired, just when the, like the, the trailer count, she went on social media and, and just bashed the show. Wow. So they're going to be the worst season ever. I mean, the girl filmed five times. That's it. You know what How it is? Know? These When they turn, when you're a full-time housewife and then you get a friend of role, I feel like, first of all, you're salty, right? Uh, they, she doesn't have a friend of role. Oh, she, she wasn't even a friend orange, of. She doesn't have a Clementine. She doesn't even have a cutie. Uh, she does not have a friend role. I'm She's a side bitch is what she is. All right. She so- just gets, you know, she comes on when they ask her to and, and she says every year, I'm not coming on unless I have a full-time role. And oh my God, there she is. Right. Because she's probably figuring, let me do it, you know, now before I don't get my shot again. Maybe she was hoping to prove herself so that next year she could come back on fully or something. But I did not realize I think that. that. That's why she's going after me. And that's why she's saying all these horrible things is because she thinks that that's going to get her back on the show. Imagine an app designed to make you use it less. Seems counterproductive, no? Well, Apartments.com's instant alert feature works exactly that way. Instead of scanning rental listings a million times a day, simply set and forget your search to whatever you're looking for in a place and let Apartments.com do the rest. From pet-friendly apartments to balconies to in-unit ACs, Apartments.com's powerful search tools let you know when your perfect combination of features you're seeking is listed. So you don't have to power through rental descriptions one by one. With more rental listings than anywhere else, Apartments.com's instant alerts mean you can spend less time online looking for the perfect place and more time doing you. And Apartments.com has more than just apartments. They have all kinds of homes from houses to townhouses to condos to apartments and everything in between. They've helped millions of renters find their perfect place to live. The ones that check off all their own personal boxes. So check it out. Apartments.com, the place to find a place. Well, see, this is how I felt about Jackie, honestly, with our season. And I had my ups and downs with Jackie as well, which I know you guys work with a little bit too and have, you know, I get to think you, are you guys intertwined in your podcast or what's the deal with that with you? So guys two Jersey Jays is under the umbrella of two T's in a pod. So we've got two Jersey Jays. We've got I pour for four. So two Jersey Jays is Jen Fessler and Jackie. Right. And then we've got I pour for four, which is, um, Alexia and Marisol and then we also have the Ed so like there's a whole group of people but like we've made it very clear um our issues with 
things that Jackie has done this season. And I also, from somebody that's been fired, can understand where that insecurity and that weirdness may come, may come from, but which is why I've repeatedly said no to doing things. Right. Because I don't want to go on and be somebody that I'm not in order to try to get my spot back. Right. Which, so which is what ends is, up happening. A lot of the time you just step out of your comfort zone. You do something, you say something that you really would never have said. And then you're stuck in this position where you just look like an asshole. And, which yeah. is why going on Orange County is very different than if I, you know, I showed up to one thing for Kyle because there was, it was like one of her friends passed away and it was like something to support my friend, but all of the other events when they're like, do you want to come? Do you want this? Blah, blah. I always say no because I'm like, I know I have something inside of me. Because that- you're not a side bitch. Right. I will, I don't ever want to be a side bitch either. I would never accept it ever. I'd be like, no, then my time has come to an end. It's been a great 14 year run, but like that's where it ends. I'm not going to do like a halfsies. I don't want half a freaking tomato. I want a whole tomato or I don't want a tomato at all. You know, like that's but just also how- then you're gonna do shit that you would normally never do because you want like you we can't help ourselves. We're all showmen like you in have some to prove way. To them. You have to prove to people right. why you should have be full time. Right. And that's why I can't do it. I'm like, I don't trust myself. I you know it's either- By the way, I don't think there's anything wrong with a part time role. I don't think there's anything wrong it with It works a for role. some people. It does work it for does some work. people. I, like I think for it works sure. for Marisol. It works for... But on Miami, you don't know who's full-time and who's part-time. You definitely There's 182 don't. housewives. Yes. I never even knew Marisol was not a full-time. I thought she was. Like, I just found that out recently. I'm like, huh? She does full-blown interviews. Same with Jen Fessler. Like, it's not... It's it's like you can barely tell that she's not full-time. And I think what's... I what's, can. It's good if they come in <laughs> as part-time and then they stay there. They're fine. It's when... They go from a full time housewife and they bring them down to a friend is when they sometimes get a little like out well, of it's difficult. Oh, it's again. difficult right. because you don't know where your where your place is. Right. When I got let go, they offered me a part time position and I chose not to do it because it's like, you know, after twelve years, I was either in or was out. Right. That's right. I agree with that. And though. if you found that I wasn't that interesting to put me, you know, to part time you know, to keep me full time, then, you know, maybe it's just time for me to go. Right. And I, I, I actually agree with that completely. Teddy, just tell me the difference between filming with the OC girls opposed to the Beverly Hill girls. I think, I mean, one, I think there's a huge difference between probably who I was seven years ago to who I am right now. You know, I was postpartum going through all of these different things. I was having a hard time in my marriage and my life and all of this. And I got thrown into Beverly Hills where I didn't know anybody. And I think I wasn't my most authentic self because I was so nervous. And I think after, you know, yes, obviously relationships are created throughout my time on Beverly Hills, but I think I got so much more comfortable using the same voice that I've always used by the time I went to OC. And I know all of those women. And the biggest change that I saw, regardless of what drama was hitting the fan, because it was everywhere. But you have to remember, I was the mediator of this situation. Um, I, I just felt like the women in OC took themselves a little less seriously. Which was refreshing. Yes, which is so much more fun. Like, I think in Beverly Hills, everybody wants to be perceived a certain way and wants to withhold this, like, this is who we are. We're Beverly Hills. We don't do this. We don't do that. And in OC, I was like, oh, no, we are in a fucking shit show, and I am excited to fucking stir it. Like, it it felt just felt... It felt effortless. Well, I feel like we're a little bit more, we're a little more scruffy than Beverly Hills girls. Like they, they're a little bit more uppity and you could just let your hair down and be like Jersey's like that. Like, yes, yes. We We don't try. I mean, we're not trying to be the richest person in the room, et cetera. No, but there's a, there's a lot of fake designer clothes. I'm not talking about you, but there's a lot of fake designer clothes on that. that No, 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 no. Wait, can we just say without mentioning names though? Like. How did the person on my show who was wearing thing after thing after episode after episode, I'm really curious, like how she thought it was not going to get called out. 
Like, why <laughs> would anyone in their right mind? That baffles me. I'm not going to lie. And but like, it's one it's- of my biggest pet peeves. That's one of my biggest. It's like trying to act richer than you are is so annoying to me like just be who you are like it's, having tons of money in the bank isn't like make you any different than if you don't but, but when I'll- you are trying to you know portray yourself as you know somebody that's just wearing strictly chanel first of all if you're gonna wear fake chanel make sure that chanel makes that outfit i know but also- i was dying like i i'm not gonna lie i slowly die inside every new scene that i saw because you know this year we didn't have the like the screeners i had to watch it in like real time and it wasn't just like a one or two it was every episode every scene which made it even more obvious that it was just well we had we had a girl we had a girl on our show last year that would just always wear fake designer everything from outfits to bags to belts to everything and i'm like what are you doing and i know there's like some woman in mission viejo by my house that sells this shit out of her garage because i know other people that used to be on our show names with retchen buys the same <laughs> shit but i think there's also a difference between being self-deprecating when you are buying fake shit or when you're doing whatever, like my brother, for example, like he went to Europe for this trip and he was all excited. And he's like, Hey, Teddy, I I bought myself a fake Hermes belt because I like wanted to fit in. And and like, we all laughed about it. And we like, like there is something charming when you can take the steam out of whatever, whatever it is. Admit it. That's what, that's what I mean. Like none of us, like clearly we are not the most highbrow, richest, most over the top, like PC people. That's why we were all in reality television at some point. But if you can laugh at yourself, I think it is so much better. If you take yourself too seriously, which I think is what happens sometimes on Beverly Hills and where I had an issue because I would sometimes be self-deprecating, but instead of the women like laughing, they'd be like, Oh, don't say that about yourself. This is going to be on television. I'm like, please just know I'm joking. Like, I obviously have a decent version of self worth. Like, just (laughs) please, just get it. Just listen. No, but it's so true. Like, I, I agree, and I don't think the people doing it on our show are trying to do it in a in a nice. It's full blown. Like, I am in head to toe. Chanel and it's just it's actually and and also being called out but then just keeps doing it it's baffling I'm just gonna say it's baffling and I think it's kind of funny that anyone thought that they'd be able to get away with that like we can't even change our nail color polish on a pickup scene because they catch that the nail polish color is a different color that we had a French manicure in the one scene. And then the next scene, there was no longer a French on my toes. Yeah, no, the confessionals, they know every little thing. They're like, hold on. Does she have a second piercing there? Was that there? Like they notice every little crumb, but I do think Orange County for the most part. This season, I forgot to put in my confessional. I forgot to put my earrings in and I filmed the whole confessional. I'm like, oh shit, I forgot my earrings. And you know, somebody's going to bring that up. You know, somebody will. A thousand percent. Even though everybody knows confessionals go on for like months. You have to wear that same stale, stinky shirt that you like (laughs) keep sending back to the dry cleaners, but like it doesn't actually, because you're going to sweat during a confessional. You just are. And I just hang it back up in my closet. Wait, do you remember back in the day, we used to do a new look each time. So I would do like eight new looks per season. And we used to do confessionals. I don't know about you guys, but in Jersey, we used to do them for the full day. It used to be an eight hour confessional with like, yeah, yeah, now they're like two hours. We used to them at home. We used to them at home. No, ours were eight hours, but Tam does them in front of a green screen. Beverly Hills. Yeah, we did it in a green screen. You did at your house. So they come in. And, you know, design our house, move our furniture, sometimes like our kitchen tables in our living room. And then they do a back plate and then we go to a green screen and, and, uh, film it. They're having issues with our, our lighting this, this season so far, either we are really washed out or we're like really bright and shows every little bump on our body. I'm like, Oh my God, guys, really? Oh my God. Kardashian filter. Wait, did you see the first like four episodes of Jersey? Everyone, especially those men which who are already a little bit red were like, lops. Oh my I gosh. mean, 
Red. Why were they magenta? Magenta. And I actually called post and I was like, guys, can you please like adjust the light? Like do adjust something. Yeah. Yes. I'm like, we are red. I am not red in person. Like I even look red. Yeah. And forget the guys. They looked like they were purple. Like it was insane. So I, I called, I'm like, this is crazy. Like we look like a freak show. I'm like, they're talking about Jersey with the tans. And then I'm like, this is not what we look like. Even my makeup artist used to get pissed because she does beautiful, like maroon eyes or whatever it is. And yeah, mine you, too. Yeah. You come up on the confessional and you look crazy. And it was like, what Either is going like on? You're like a clown or you're so muted. I'm like, what is going on this year, guys? Yes. What's going on? Yes. Like we're trying to, we're, we're fixing it. We're fixing it. Not everybody can look as good as we all three look right now, which is yeah. I look bald with um, a red chest and my hair is still wet. No, you guys <laughs> always look good and you have to do podcasts constantly. I don't know how you do this. Like 24 hours a day, you just have to be like, you know, on the screen, which is crazy. At least I do this once a week. You guys are doing this like all day, every day, right? You're doing yeah, this is, like well, your main there's event. There's a lot of hats. There's a lot of hats. We should probably get a little bit more creative with our baseball hats. Maybe wear something a little bit cuter. No, we I need we we need new things. And also to be clear, I need new extensions because mine are so ratty and old that I'm like, <laughs> if my hair is down, I honestly look like I should be <laughs> like lock me up because there's like eight strands of dogs the bounty hunter. hunter. On display with Melissa Gorga is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Hey guys, whether you love true crime, comedies, celebrity interviews, news, or even motivational speakers. You call the shots on what's in your podcast queue, right? And guess what? Now you can call the shots on your auto insurance too. Enter the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. The Name Your Price tool puts you in charge of your auto insurance by working just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you a variety of coverages that fit within your budget, giving you options. Now that's something you're going to want to press play on. It's easy to start a quote and you'll be able to choose the best option for you fast. It's just one of the many ways you can save with progressive insurance. Quote today at progressive.com to try the name your price tool for yourself and join the over 28 million drivers who trust progressive progressive casualty insurance company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. I'm going to ask both of you guys this. Why? What's with this Chanel Ion girl? Have you guys, like, what's the deal with that? And why do you guys know that I don't know her? Like, do not know the woman. I believe she was in the room when I came. Remember BravoCon? You guys had that, like, yes. pre-room. I remember yeah, she party. was there. She was present in the room. But her and I, I don't even know if we spoke that night. I don't remember because remember we were all doing shots and we were having a really good time in the room. Yeah. You guys were podcasting. But like every time I turn around, she's saying something about me. And I've never had oh, a Oh, is she talking badly about you? Yeah. Like she just throws comments. Hold on. Like, can, can you guys help me with the timeline? Was Teresa's wedding before BravoCon? Yes. Yes. Okay. So well, that's, remember she ended up going because she was on Watch What Happens Live maybe the two days before Teresa's wedding. So then she went to Teresa's wedding and then she went to BravoCon. So she was like team 1 million percent Teresa. But what we've learned about Chanel Ion, granted, couldn't find a nicer person in my DMs. Like she is lovely. She's super kind. Sweet, but she rides hard for Teresa. Right. Yeah, but that's Hard fine. Why things. are you coming for me? I don't even know you. Like, I don't what? know. You know, she have you ever spoken like, to her? I want to say no, but I will tell you this because because I'm worried about like your party. I don't know if we said hello or somebody introduced us. I do not remember ever meeting her. Um, well, she was mad we, at me at the party. Oh, well, she also kept calling me Tamara and Tamara Teddy, and <sighs> every five minutes. We would be in the middle of an interview. Like we'd already interviewed her and she'd be like, Hey, I'm ready to come back in. And I was like, um, love you, but we finished Dubai. <laughs> yeah. Like she, I think she, she was really drunk, right? Wasn't she really drunk? Oh, I really? Mean, she well, I can yeah. tell, listen to this. Everything she does is for a moment, right? I mean, like it, it's a sound bite. It's a moment. Like she, she says it and then we're in the press together. And I'm like, why is she? 
discussing me. I don't know who she is. I have never had like a conversation with her. So let me tell you, fast forward a little bit. Dolores's baseball game was the other day. I yeah. could I couldn't another go. one. Yeah. So not she does the one we saw on camera. No, she she had the most recent one that now was not filmed because we're not filming right now. Um, so she had some of the cast from Traders there. So Chanel Ion was there, Dorinda was there. I could not go this year because I was booked previously in Boston. So I was out in Boston, so I had to miss it this year. Well, she went up to some of my cast members because she was there. She went up to Danielle. Um, she went up to Margaret. Do and- we like Danielle? You know what? Yes. Yes. And it took me a minute. It took me a minute. I'm not going to lie to you, but she's not, she doesn't want it. You know what I like about her? She's good at owning who she is. She compliments. She's happy for other women. She does lift people up. She does like, I, she's a girl's girl. I'm telling you right now, you, I hope we get to see more of her. You like, you know, I hope there's I, the season's over and I'm thinking you'll see more this season season's over, but I I'm telling you, she really proved herself to me lately and I like her a lot. So let me just, well, we're going to get more into that on two T's in a pod. We will. We'll yeah, talk about I, that on I yours. really enjoyed her this season. Oh, you did. Okay. Well, we'll talk about that her. on yours, but let me just finish what, what happened at, at the yeah. baseball and then, game. And then we're going to switch over to the yes. twats, but we're going to, you finish this statement and then we go over. Okay, so at the baseball game, she went up to Margaret, who she also trashes in the press all the time. And she apologized to Margaret, said she's sorry, yada, yada, yada. Then I guess Rachel and Danielle and Margaret said, what's up with you and Melissa? Like, why are you coming? Melissa has no, doesn't know you, has no idea why you come for her all the time. They said, you know, she's actually the nicest person. If you don't start with her, she never would just randomly start with someone. Like, what are you doing? And they said, Chanel was like, oh my God, I feel so bad. I was told she talks terribly about me. And Margaret was like, who told you she talks terribly about you? Like, Melissa doesn't just talk. You'd have to do something to Melissa for her to just, she's, she's not that kind of girl. She doesn't even know you. She doesn't talk. And she's like, well, I was told she doesn't like me and she talks terribly about me. And she's like, I feel so bad. I, I feel terrible. I am going to make a public apology after today, apologizing to Melissa for all the things I've said about her because really I don't know her and I thought she was talking shit on me. So I don't, wow. I don't think she mentioned any names on who told her this, but it's 1000% fabricated. It's a thousand percent. I actually enjoy her little spunkiness. I don't think that she's someone, I think she's a beautiful woman. I I mean, yes, she walks around in a gown to probably the the, the supermarket, but like, whatever, (laughs) she's a character in her own way. Like, but my point is like, I have never said a bad word about this woman. And there's someone out there who is telling her that I did. So I think that's crazy. And I, well, wish I think she... we all know who's telling her stuff. I mean, we can and imagine. She... We can imagine. Yeah, we can right? imagine. I, I, I mean, I'll say something to her. It, but I never got the public apology. It's never happened yet. So I don't you're know if not... she's... Just for the record, you're never getting a public apology. Never. Right. It's not happening. Okay. Well, you're not, I, you're you know, not, you're it's not, not going any skin to off on. my back. Honestly, like I can, like at this point, I'm like, I don't know you if you, and I even said I'm one of my latest pods. I'm like, Hey girl, call me. Like, I don't know what your problem is. Like slide into my DMS. Like, let me know what's up because this is weird. We're talking yeah. about somebody who on Dubai shared a voice note from her best friend to somebody else, a private voice note. So you have to envision this. She shared a private voice note from her best friend to another cast member, never told that cast member that this was from her friend, shared it, and then they brought it up at a dinner. So it's like, I think that sometimes... Things get a little messy with Chanel. I think Chanel is amazing TV. I think she's beautiful. I think she's stunning. I think we learn a lot from her. But I, yeah. she is so furious at Stanberry. She's furious at Lisa Milan because they're upset with her about this voice note. I'm like, you shared it. You're the one who you did it. fucking shared it. Like, that's the long and short of it. Like... Other than that, the only person you can be upset with is yourself. If you're going to share something with, on television 
that your best friend shared with you, then that's on you. Right. And it's all about accountability for me. Someone owns it. Like, and I feel like Tamara, you're great at that. You always take accountability whenever you like, you do your little shady shit sometimes, which you do. Right. But you own it, own it, own it. And like, it's, I'm all about that. Like if she called me tomorrow and said, you know what? I don't know why, like this, 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 and this. All right, let's have a conversation, you know? But like, it's all about accountability. And with that note, we are going to switch over now, guys, to two teas in a pod. So you can continue listening to the conversation over there. But thank you girls for being on display today. I love you both so much. And let's continue it over on your space over there. We are so excited. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon two teas in a pod and thank you so much for having us on on display melissa of course love you guys ciao love ya bye What if I told you that I just walked away from a wonderful and very high profile fitness brand to pursue bigger dreams? And I broke away from my own golden handcuffs to pursue a more artistic life. What's up? I'm Kendall Tool. And I'm Gailey Alex. And we are so excited to share our new podcast, Wholeheartedly with Kendall and Gailey. The two of us have taken the uncharted path and felt we were at a great place, or at least at a pivot point in our lives, to share our biggest tragedies and triumphs. So that everyone here with us can learn from our battles, victories, and our total F-ups. And that's from two people who have really been through it. Good Lord, yes. We're both still navigating life and we want you to come along on the journey so we can stay in the fight to overcome whatever BS is thrown our way. It's not easy out here, but we'll be walking and talking with you through building careers, self-worth, relationships. Oh, and get some good laughs, please. Or tears. There's tears. That's true. There's always tears. That's true. All with our hearts on the line. So if this sounds additive to your journey, we are here for you. Join us every week on Wholeheartedly with Kendall and Gailey. Wholeheartedly will be available July 17th. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Sci-fi fans, this is your summer. Pluto TV Summer of Cinema is bringing you a universe of free sci-fi movies. Discover new futures with The Matrix and World War Z host Alien Explores with Arrival, or beam up to Journey the Galaxy with Star Trek Beyond. The sun never sets in outer space, or on streaming hundreds of free sci-fi movies when you download the Pluto TV app now. Pluto TV Summer of Cinema. Stream now. Pay never.